Okay, cool. Okay. Okay, hello. It's Christine Sau again, and today we are talking about intentional intuitive eating. Welcome everybody, whether you are live, hi, or you are later watching the recording. Let me share my screen and uh, let me show you what you can of course see in the course, but most people need a little bit help with the course. And these meetings are mainly so you can come with questions. So if you have any questions, please come to the meeting so I can answer them. And feel free, if I explain something here on the screen, feel free to interrupt me. It doesn't bother me a bit. I know they say, don't interrupt other people when they speak. You can interrupt me. Please do. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's see. What is intentional intuitive eating? I call it the diet solution because we don't need a restrictive diet to lose weight. We need to eat like our ancestors to lose weight. We need to listen to our real hunger signals. And maybe for some time you might want to restrict the eating window to intermittent fasting. That is a method, but on the long run, you will not keep the weight off if you think dieting works. Because dieting makes you fat, not thinner. Dieting is the main cause of obesity. Just think about that. Before we all talked about diet, the rate of people that were obese was much lower. People didn't get big until about the 60s of 1900. So it's about 40, 60 years ago, if I calculate correctly. And what changed? Number one, the diet craze came on. Number two, processed food came on. <laughs> Ansel Case and all his stuff that he said, which we know is not completely true. And the industry made a lot of strides in gaining influence over what we eat. Now, the truth is, I done it. I talked to thousands of other people in Facebook, real world, yeah, Zoom, <laughs> go brunch, real world if you want to. Any diet will help you lose weight in the short run. And any restrictive diet will reset your metabolism to a slow crawl. So as soon as you eat normally, you pack on some extra pounds and you feel like a failure, feeling worse, and usually you start eating even more. And it's really frustrating. I've experienced it and I know it. And here's an article linked if you want to the surprising root causes of obesity. Have a look, maybe you like it. Now, while you are doing intermittent fasting, here are rules what you can eat. Please, during the challenge, and if you ever want to do intermittent fasting, Aim for one to two meals made with mostly whole foods. Avoid processed foods as much as possible. And that's why I linked my book in the last uh, uh, course part. So you can download it and see what whole foods are and what's good to eat, what's avoidable, what's better to avoid and what's acceptable. Avoid snacks if you can. If you really feel hungry, drink one of the allowed liquids. And in this uh, intermittent fasting challenge, we'll go by 16 to 8. Do not eat three hours before laying down. Eat during eight hours of the day. So avoid any processed foods that comes out of a box. Classic examples are craft dinner or wonder bread. I always say, no wonder we are all big. <laughs> it's a wonder bread. It certainly has its part. Uh, avoid candy or chocolate, except for a little bit and uh, avoid food juice. They have a lot of added sugar. So drink a lot of all kinds of sparkling. Am I at the right day today, by the way? I think so. I hope so. Oh my God. When did we start? 1819? <laughs> Is it day two? I think so. Uh, if not, I apologize and I'll fix it. 
How do I manage hunger? I think we do. Hunger is very important to manage. It's very important to realize that hunger passes like a wave. So even if you feel what you think is hungry, just wait a little and say, okay, notice it and say, oh, I feel hungry and notice how it feels. And uh, just like a cloud on the sky, let it go and see if you're really hungry, your stomach will growl and most people actually worry that hunger will get worse until it's really bad. But the opposite actually happens. When you choose to ignore hunger or just acknowledge it, notice it and let it go, you know what? It goes away. And hunger sometimes comes in waves. If you simply ignore it, drink a cup of tea or coffee, often it will pass. And when you start a fast, hunger will often increase to the second day. After that, it gets less. And many people say that after about three or four days, they're no longer hungry at all, whether they eat or not. And that means your body is now being powered by your fat. And that's what you want, at least most of the time. So your body is eating its own fat for breakfast, lunch and dinner. So why should you be hungry? There's lots of fuel there. Your body is prepared for that. Your body knows how to fast. You just have to trust your intuition and your body. When can you eat? Only eat when you feel truly hungry. Do not snack. If you feel like eating, drink instead. Eat one or two meals a day during your eating window. When you start, use the 16-8. Do you do not eat, but drink during the other 16 hours of the day. I do not want you to restrict your fluid intake unless you have kidney failure. And please ask your physician if that's the case, if you even should fast. Do not eat in the three hours before laying down to go to sleep. If you want to try other eating patterns, there's a few overview of other patterns. Now, there's a mindful eating exercise that I linked, a guided meditation, how to eat nice and slow. And I really want you to enjoy every bite, savor every bite, whether it's what you consider healthy food or whether you have a cookie or candy and you think, oh my God, I'm cheating. If you choose to cheat, that's fine. But realize you're choosing to cheat and enjoy it. At least enjoy it. Why should you feel guilty? Okay, you make the choice. I want to have chocolate. I'm stressed. I know chocolate will help me. It does. It increases dopamine. It makes you feel good. So if you choose to treat your stress with chocolate or any other candy, at least enjoy it. And if you can, set a goal, well, I only have one piece. And then when you eat that piece within five minutes mindfully and just look at the guided meditation that I have here, it's an audio file, so you can download it. You will notice that one piece satisfies you as much or more than before the whole chocolate bar would have done. And that's a goal. Because it's not that I want you to deprive yourself and say, I'll never have chocolate in my life. That's not realistic. That leads to failure. So here we go. How can we eat? How should we eat? And not just during the fasting. You know, most people do not pay attention to how they ate. They just wolf down the foods as fast as they can. They might watch TV, listen to something else get distracted, drink with the food, and just don't pay attention. They feel hungry and boop, 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 big, big bites. You know, the two bite brownies, most of them is only one bite. <laughs> but they really should be, if you choose to eat a two bite brownie, it's at least a hundred bites if you eat it mindfully. And that will stretch and it will last you for much, much longer and give you more enjoyment in the end. So when you sit down for a meal, at least try to do nothing else. Uh, don't drive, watch TV, and do anything else that distracts you from the good food. 
if you can share it in good company, it's great. But try not to eat when you have a fight or heated conversation because stress just leads to indigestion and eventually to weight gain. Always eat mindfully. Pay attention what you're doing and feeling right now. And when you take a bite of your food, a small bite, first look at your food before you even take the bite. And then feel the texture with your lips. Chew it properly at least 10 times before you eventually swallow it. And then feel it going down your stomach. And set the intention for this bite of food to nourish your body and soul and help it to function great and to help you to achieve your purpose in life. And I hope you actually set your purpose in life in the last uh, uh, yesterday with the 3W uh, sheet. Now, a friend of mine, a naturopath, had a wonderful mindful eating guided meditation that she allowed me to share. You can download it and uh, follow the advice. It's good. And then I want you to find out why you eat. Because we all eat for different reasons. And nowadays, very often, it is not because we are hungry. So before you eat anything, why do you want to eat this? I have to fix the typo. Is it because I feel like it? And that's the most common reason of obesity, emotional eating. And we'll have a whole 12 week course that's coming up in, I think, in September. And feel free to explore it. And if you like it, I'd love to have you there. Many people eat because it's time to eat. Oh, it's supper time. It's lunch time. It's time for breakfast. Mm. Sometimes set times are necessary if you have a family or for other reason. But generally, it's not helpful to eat just because it's breakfast time, lunch time, or supper time. And I know my parents say encouraged me, oh, eat one teaspoon for grandma, one teaspoon for grandpa, and so on. That's social pressure or others say, oh, don't be a party pooper, have a bite with us. So we need to learn to say no and in a, in a caring, gentle way. And I say, thank you so much for inviting me. But right now, I really don't feel like eating. Thank you so much. You enjoy your bite. And you can sometimes just grab a small bite. And sometimes it's just convenient. You know, the bowl of candy next to our desk at work. At the nurse's station, there was always a bowl of candy, chocolate. Oh, my God. So tempting. And it's not a reason to eat just because a bowl is there and you feel stressed. So what can you do to find out what the emotion is if you tend to eat because you feel like it? Because that's really important. We cannot change anything if you don't know what's behind this. So if you tend to eat to soothe yourself, to stuff down feelings, here's how to do it. I have a great worksheet where you can find out the feeling that triggers you most. It's actually you can uh, print it out and you can uh, track it over time and then you know. And you can try ways to address this feeling without food. And I wrote a very good blog post that still ranks high on Google all the time in the first page. And it's about how to appreciate the little things. And I really broke it down. And it's really important in everything in life. Right now, I appreciate you being here. I appreciate technology giving me the opportunity to share what I learned with the world. What do you appreciate right now? Think about it. And if needed, of course, talk with a trusted person about other options to address these feelings. And if they bother you a lot, there's ways how to change negative feelings or what you label right now negative feelings into more positive feelings that will support your weight loss, your well-being and your mental health. I sometimes say we just want to dial it down some. We don't want to eliminate negative feelings because there is no negative emotions. There's just more helpful 
and less helpful. And there's a range and you can often like on a dial, you can dial it up and down. And to learn how to do that is a skill that you can learn. And if you want to talk with me about it, there's a way to can book a free call. So here's a worksheet and the link to that. Now cravings. The last thing we want to talk about today when we talk about food, because often we fear that craving and craving is really exactly the mental thing. It's in part physical, in part mental. And it's very interesting because there's a book by Julia Ross, may, maybe some, some sort about amino acids. They work to turn down cravings a little bit, but they do not work to really change your eating patterns and they do not there by itself it's not enough to change emotional eating because the emotion is not turned down enough they are not changed enough it's just a, a neurotransmitter thing that you can do with amino acids with cravings so if you still have cravings after working up to here there should be several reasons you could suffer from nutrient deficiencies and overweight people most often have nutrient deficiencies. That's exactly why they are overweight, because your brain tells you when you eat Twinkies all day, extreme example, hey, I'm not getting enough nutrients, eat more, eat more, eat more. But if you eat enough nutrients, you have a much higher chance that your brain says, okay, I had enough nutrients. Sadly, most people these days suffer from nutrient deficiencies and most foods are no longer nutritional, fully valid. So I usually recommend a supplement regimen. I take them myself and they have greatly supported my mental and physical health over the years. Another reason for craving may be that you're not drinking enough and you're not taking enough salt. And sometimes you're just craving for something else but food. But to think you want food is easier to think about because the real reason may trigger painful emotions and you're trying to avoid them by eating. And another reason could be that you have stronger emotional eating challenges and you need more support to overcome them. And one reason that I really love to talk about is that your gut may be out of balance. And that can lead not just to a neurotransmitter imbalance and mental problems, but also that you cannot break down or digest and absorb or assimilate your food properly. So even if you eat healthy food, if your gut microbiome is out of whack, you will not get the nutrients you get because the nutrients only help you if they actually reach the cells and your mitochondria, the power of uh, uh, factories of the body are able to burn it. So your mitochondrial health is essential and the gut health is essential. There are many, many things that work together to give you best health and a normal weight. I have a craving questionnaire. Feel free to, uh, to take it if you want to. Uh, in the end, it's not just cravings that makes you feel overweight. Alrighty, any questions so far? Hmm. I do oh. have a question. Um, I, I think we touched on it Friday, maybe, but the last health coach I was I was with thought that intermittent fasting, which I've done before and have loved, she said something about it uh, raising blood sugar and kind of making more stress on the body. And that's why she didn't recommend it for okay. me. And it can do that in exceptional cases. It depends what you eat and how you eat it. Generally speaking, it does not raise blood sugar. And that's why it's important to eat the right foods. I've done intermittent fasting quite often and over time, actually, the average blood sugar goes lower. And if you mm -hmm. feel stressed because you're fasting, of course, your sugar will go up because the cortisol will raise your blood sugar from the stress. 
So really, it's not the process of fasting that's raising your sugar. It's a stress. Mm. And that's why I say intuitive, intentional eating. I don't want you to stress out over diet. I don't want you to stress out, are you, I'm allowed to eat this. Am I not allowed? Everything is allowed to eat as long as you're very mindful what you're eating, when you're eating, and why you're eating. And my private clients, I always get them to give me pictures of everything they eat. It works like a charm. <laughs> because when I get those pictures, well, it keeps them accountable, kind of. Hmm, what did you eat today? Okay, looks good. Or, okay, I see a real big piece of chocolate cake. What happened? It's not about judgment. It's just about thinking about why things happen. Because we all sometimes do things that are not in our best interest, right? Did that answer your question? Yeah, and intermittent fasting is also okay if hormones are off, like thyroid or estrogen and it things depends. like that. In that case, I always would ask the doctor. Uh, intermittent fasting, by the way, is a way to eliminate type 2 diabetes. It has been proven to do that over time. Fasting eliminates type 2 diabetes. Now, thyroid things, I would have it checked, generally speaking, I would want to know why the thyroid is not working properly. Is it the nutrient mm -hmm. deficiencies? Very common. Is it that the gut microbiome can't support the enzymes you need to transform their hormones and produce them? Is something wrong with the thyroid? What is the reason? I want to know the causes. So it can't be answered okay. one over all, but generally speaking, I would ask your doctor, if you take any medications, ask your family physician, before you do anything. Generally speaking, if you have a thyroid issue, you think you have a sluggish thyroid. More often than not, it's not your thyroid. It's just your mitochondrial health that's out of whack. And intermittent fasting, sauna bathing, moderate intensity exercise is perfect to revitalize your mitochondria. Thank You're you. Welcome. So I can only say do it if you're okay with it because I don't want to force anybody to do anything. Any other questions? Sure. Mm, not for Excellent. Me. You know what? That's enough for tonight and we'll meet tomorrow night and we'll talk about intentional intuitive movement. <gasps> that will be lots of fun. Yay! Yay. And it's actually nice moving. It's much more fun than going to the gym and mindless running on the treadmill. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have a great afternoon. Have a great day. And I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.